The Florida Community of Mindfulness is happy to make these talks available to you. If you find this talk to be a benefit, please consider making a donation to support us. You'll find a donation button on the Talks section of our website, floridamindfulness.org. Thank you, and may you be happy and free of suffering. Everyone, and thank you for coming uh, this morning. Uh, what I want to begin with uh, this morning, it's sort of a continuation of what we've been looking at for many months now, uh, are these four nutriments coming from an old uh, sutra teaching of the Buddha. Uh, on uh, sort of, if you could imagine, uh, well, not imagine, it's sort of what we are. That that if you could imagine, sort of, but you're just a body and a mind. Uh, you realize uh, the body and mind are always consuming. It's a different way of looking. And I think we understand, again, uh, how the body consumes uh, food, things, uh, but also the mind is consuming. Uh, we're consuming, and we're consuming, the mind is always consuming experiences. It consumes experiences through the senses, things we see and smell and taste, uh, hear, feel in our bodies. Uh, we are always sensing things, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. And uh, we sort of, uh, in the same way, we sort of go toward, uh, let's say, foods. We sort of go through foods, towards foods that are pleasurable, gobble, gobble, gobble. And we sort of avoid foods that we find unpleasurable, and, and then there are other kinds of foods we couldn't care less about. But in the same way, we are very uh, driven uh, by the things that appear to our senses, positive and negative, and uh, we consume a lot through our sensory experience. And one of the things we, uh, the last time I was here, uh, spent some time talking about, which is uh, sort of very kind of modern for our age, is just the whole use of electronics and media and just this capacity, as opposed to just a few, maybe a generation or two ago, where the consumption of sensory impression was primarily in the natural world, right? Now we have the capacity to be endlessly consuming through hearing and seeing and smelling and tasting endlessly uh, through electronic uh, devices. Uh, and so it is something very modern uh, but also something uh, very significant that we uh, need to take note of. And again, we've given talks on that, and uh, we've given suggestions about people can get apps for their electronics that kind of help monitor uh, their usage, because there's a lot of information out there that our usage is, is mirroring uh, addiction. Uh, and there's a lot of denial around that. But I am not going to get into that today. But what I wanted to get into, and actually what I'm going to talk about later today, is the third uh, impression, which is volition or intention or will, uh, which is very important. But I wanted to uh, talk just a little bit about, I think, something that's very much related uh, to this overstimulated uh, world uh, that we live in now. And uh, usually the uh, teens in the teen program uh, leave uh, after, uh, after walking and then they do their own thing. Uh, but uh, some of them have stayed today because uh, I thought boredom uh, was especially relevant uh, to teenagers, uh, but, not, maybe, but maybe not so anymore. As I say that, I realize I think that was very characteristic. I mean, I raised uh, children, so uh, I know very characteristically that that's often something we hear from teenagers. But perhaps in this world of overstimulation, that boredom is something that uh, affects everyone. Uh, is much more pervasive, but I think it's significant uh, because I think it, is a, it, is, it becomes a motivator of our behavior. Uh, and I think it's also very relevant to uh, those of us who undertake uh, meditation because if there is anything that is boring, <laughs> as some of you might have noticed, initially, you know, is meditation. And, I, and, and, uh, and uh, actually, my six-year-old grandson, he also, he, he agrees with that. He doesn't, he doesn't like to meditate because it's boring. 
he says. Uh, but, you know, but again, I think that is really one of its uh, wonderful qualities. And I think it's another reason, I think, why, why uh, becoming uh, acquainted uh, with meditation is so kind of essential uh, these days because we don't know anymore how just to be. You know, something I think that was much more uh, normal and natural uh, just not too many generations ago when there just wasn't a lot going on. You know, and so people just often just just hung out, you know, in space and time uh, without a lot going on. Uh, so, so this boredom, which I think, I think is a fairly pervasive feeling in human beings these days, especially in our culture. Uh, but it could not, it may be something that we are not that aware of because we have the capacity uh, with all our electronic devices to immediately, when we feel a little bored, to what? To do something, to turn something on, right? And so, it's almost like uh, we don't have to face the boredom anymore because we have immediate access to stimulation. But you know, there is something uh, in the field of addictions uh, where people start out, let's say, normal, and then they, uh, they imbibe, imbibe their uh, um, substance of choice and they get stimulated, right? Now the problem with that stimulation is it doesn't last. So they come down. But when they come down back to what was normal, normal now feels very unstimulated, very uninteresting. So what happens over time is what even used to be normal is now much more abnormal and boring, right? Boring really means what? When we're bored, we're, we're sort of uninterested, we might say, in what's going on around us. And our capacity to be bored is not only sort of if we're uh, in an environment where nothing's happening, we can be bored doing whatever we're doing. <laughs> we can be doing. And we could say, this is boring, or, right? Or we could be with people and we might say, what? They're boring. These people are boring. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not even, so it's not that nothing's going on, but it's a lack of interest, and which becomes kind of a, a flatness, right? A dullness in the mind, which we experience as what? Unpleasant. And if there's one thing people in our culture do not like to experience is what? Unpleasant sensations. Is that true? We want things to be what? Pleasant, right? right? We like things to be fun, right? If, we, if we're honest with ourselves, right? And so when things are not pleasant, when things are not fun, when things are not stimulating, interesting to us, we get flat. We get dull. We get bored. And again, we can get very much into that addictive spiral of creating, wanting, needing more and more stimulation and not realize this addictive quality to it. Is that clear? And that we have lost kind of the essential um, quality, I think, of, of a ground of, of being a human being, which is this capacity to live with a sense of innate well be. Let me say that again. Innate well being. That there's a sense of well being, there's a sense of ease, there's a sense of whatever within me, even if nothing's going on. Now, I don't, I mean, this is something that you kind of feel. And it may be something that many of us do not feel or haven't felt. But I would imagine. You know, you have felt it. <laughs> Maybe on vacation. You know? 
<laughs> or just sometimes when you just feel, you know, everything's okay. You know, I don't have to do anything now. I'm just happy, happy being here, right? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a feeling tone. Uh, but in a meditative sense, it's really this kind of innate well-being, this kind of grounded sense of oneself, one's own mind, that everything's okay. And that I can be, inter- you know, that if boredom is a lack of interest in what's going on around me, I can learn to become interested, curious in what's going around, around, on around me, even if it's very ordinary. And I think that is a capacity that meditative meditation gives us. Because again, I think the initial experience for many of us in meditation is it's boring because there's nothing going on. Right? And we want something to go on. So many of us in our meditation, we create a little drama. Right? About nothing's going on. I want something to go on. I better get more interested in it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like, you know, we 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 just can't relax and go, yeah, there's nothing going on. But that may not be boring. Because we could even be curious or interested in what we're actually experiencing that we're calling boredom. See, boredom's a word. A word for what? For an experience. Experience is going on where? In my body mind. Well, what is actually going on in my body mind? Oh, maybe something is going on in my body mind that I could become curious about, interested in finding out about. Oh. Well, when I'm curious and interested, I'm no longer bored. Can, are you following me? I'm no longer bored. So that's why, and it sort of ties in where, where we're going to the third uh, of aspiration, intention, uh, volition, is, you know, why am I meditating? Right? What am I trying to learn here? What am I trying to develop here? And am I interested in that experience that I am having? Because we are always having experiences. It it is untrue that nothing is going on. There's always something going on, right? I mean, one of the things we learn is we're always breathing. Oh, that's going on. Yeah, so for me to say, I'm nothing going on, no, I'm breathing. And I have all kinds of sensations in my body. That's going on. Wow. And I got lots of thoughts, feelings, perceptions, memories, without me doing anything that are arising in my mind. Everybody know what I'm talking about. Oh, there's actually a lot going on. Now, what is my relationship to what's going on? If I'm not interested in what's going on, if I'm not curious about what's going on, if I don't want to learn about my capacity to be peaceful, to be at ease, if I don't want to learn about the nature of my mind, thoughts, feelings, perceptions, and try to understand this process, then there's no curiosity, there's no interest, and it's boring. So it's very important that You know, again, whether we're in, again, I think this meditation is a laboratory because it's so obviously boring. (laughs) You see? I mean, we sort of enforce it, you know what I mean? Like for the next 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I'm just going to sit here, right? And I'm not going to answer the phone and I'm not going to turn on my computer and I'm not going to text anybody. You know what I mean? It's like, so it's a great laboratory for learning how to be present to boredom and to learn how to be. But I think I would certainly encourage everyone in here to be attentive, you know, to watch, to watch the movement of your mind as it moves toward wanting to do something. Everybody know what I'm talking about? It wants to do something. It wants to look at something. It wants to be stimulated. And if we don't stop in that moment and be curious about what is actually going on within me right now. 
See, we turn it this way. We're curious about this rather than kind of have a robotic you know, response to you know, the feeling of uncomfortableness, the feeling of uh, loneliness, the feeling of emptiness, the feeling of boredom, the feeling of disinterest. And rather than kind of being with that suffering, I mean, not a great suffering, but it may be a pervasive kind of low-level suffering that is really conditioning so much of our responses to life. And often when we're coming from an inability to be with ourselves, to be with life as it is, right? Then we often act in ways that we grab after things that are perhaps not that healthy for us, not that good for us, not that nourishing for us, right? It's like being hungry and grabbing for junk food, right? It, it may fill us up, but there's no nutrition in it, right? And so if I'm not, if I don't have any self-awareness of what's going on inside me, then I'm really a slave to these uh, impulses that are fundamentally dysfunctional because I am unwilling to be present to myself and what's going on inside me right now and be willing and wanting to explore, be curious, be interested so I can find, you see, a, a way to be at peace with myself in all situations. And that I know that I have the capacity, you know, if I'm with somebody and I'm going, when are they going to stop talking? I don't know if I can take any more. You, know? <laughs> you see, in that moment, what am I doing? I'm separating, I'm distancing, and I'm causing myself suffering. The antidote to that is what? Be curious about them. And if I'm not curious about the words that they're speaking, I'm certainly curious about why would somebody go on like this? You know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, you know, I would try to, I would, tr I would try to understand them. You see what I mean? I mean, maybe they're covering up something. You know, maybe they're not comfortable. Maybe they're trying to impress. Maybe they're. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I, I can be curious about sort of what's underneath it, all this. But as soon as I'm curious, as I become interested. And as soon as I'm interested, I'm not bored. I mean, does that make sense? And all of a sudden, I'm out of that state. Uh, so again, I think, you know, and I'm relating this to a lot of our, uh, you know, discussions uh, weeks ago about kind of the over, over, over uses and stimulation of uh, electronic devices uh, these days is, I think, this boredom, which again just happens, it's, it's, the, it's not often, again, driven originally by boredom. It's, it, it often develops because we know the sophistication of the people who are creating these media and the software and the programs of it, they know what they're doing, right? They are keeping us what? Stimulated, interested, right? And the way the mind works, when it loses that stimulation, that excitement, it, it, it gets, it feels, well, it has like a little withdrawal thing. You know, it's like a little bit of withdrawal, and withdrawal is uncomfortable. That's the nature of withdrawal. It's uncomfortable. And if we're not willing to stop and examine that uncomfortableness, then we are well, we're, we're, we're stuck, we're trapped in a cycle that doesn't end. You just keep, 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 keep. So again, I think mindfulness, meditation, all these things are very helpful ways that we can learn that in stillness, there is great happiness.
in calmness, there is a wonderful sense of being, a sense of coming home to oneself, which is much deeper and more enriching than constant stimulation. 